So in this complete tutorial, I'm gonna share everything that you need to know about Amazon FBA, becoming an Amazon seller, understanding how to find products to sell, how to source those products, how to do things like private labeling, understanding shipping costs, understanding Amazon fees, and some other really great tactics for becoming a successful Amazon seller in 2023. Now, we made a video about this a couple years ago. Uh, millions of people found it to be very valuable. I couldn't tell you how many people uh, really took some great information from that and used it to create success Successful Amazon stores. Um, so this is a full tutorial. Look, it's, it's, it's going to be long, okay? I know there's a lot of other distractions you could be doing. You could be on TikTok, you'd be doing all kinds of other things. But I can promise you this, that if you sit down and you focus and you take notes, take out a pen, take out a piece of paper, you take notes on this video, I think you're going to have a decent chance at at least understanding the Amazon industry, hopefully becoming a successful Amazon seller and getting your first store up and running. In this video, you're going to really extract a lot of information, even if it's just one gold nugget that is going to be an aha moment for you that's going to save you thousands of dollars potentially. That is really the goal. Now, I need to make a couple of things clear before we get deep into this video. First of all, I have nothing here to sell you, okay? Uh, I don't have an online course. There's literally, there, there's no course, okay? There's no upsell. This is free information. We don't offer any courses. We don't offer any mentorship because I really do believe that you can access so much free information on the internet. So let's get into this. Here is the, just the brief overview of everything we'll be talking about in this video. Um, now, let's quickly understand what should you expect from this video and then also what should you expect going in and becoming an Amazon seller. Um, like I said, take some notes here, but I want you to try to avoid something like shiny object syndrome, which is something that I've suffered from for the longest time where I would uh, think about starting a new business and I would get excited about it. I would do it for two weeks and then I would move on to a different business, right? And I probably did this 15 or 20 different times. I started a bunch of businesses. I'd get bored with them. I'd move on to the next next big business opportunity. Um, but if you focus on one specific area, one specific type of business, then it's going to significantly increase your chances for succeeding because you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to learn from those mistakes and you're going to eventually become better and better. And then also, I want you to set some realistic goals for selling on Amazon. Um, so as I said, there's a lot of bad actors in this space, but it is very possible to become a successful Amazon seller in 2023. Yes, it's a lot more difficult to do it today than it was in 2014, but it is still very possible. Um, so I want you to set realistic goals and understand that you're not going to become a billionaire in 12 months from selling on Amazon. There is a lot of competition. Um, and I think a realistic goal, if I was first starting out, would be to maybe try to profit a couple thousand dollars per month within the next year. And that would be my goal. Um, and, and hopefully you can scale that up. And, you know, there's people who make millions of dollars on this platform. Uh, but set a, a realistic goal, one that you feel as though you can achieve that's not too far out. You know, if you say you want to make a billion dollars, you're probably, it's going to be really difficult, right? And it's, it's, you're going to get discouraged. But if you set a goal that's relatively small, like a few thousand dollars per month, I think you're going to have a better chance at succeeding. So let's get into the details on this video. Uh, I will show you how to source products and find products and uh, 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 private label and everything else in this video. But what I first want to actually talk about today is why you should sell on Amazon and why not go for other platforms? Why not do drop shipping with Shopify um, or maybe sell products uh, through social media um, or, or have your own website, right? Why specifically Amazon? And I think the biggest reason is because uh, Amazon is 70% uh, of adults in the U.S. have Amazon Prime. Okay, uh, it's over 100 million people who shop on Amazon in the United States, which is a massive, massive proportion of the population. Um, and so it's, it makes up about half of all e-commerce sales in the United States at the moment, which is a really absurd number when you think about it. Um, but I think the best reason why Amazon is such an attractive uh, uh, business opportunity potentially is that uh, there's like people are already on the platform and Amazon is one of the biggest search engines in the world. So behind like Google and YouTube, I'm not sure. I think Amazon might be number three. There might be something else in there as well. But people are searching millions of times per day on Amazon's platform. And so there should be less marketing that you need to do for your products to sell your products. Like for example, if you have a website with Shopify, uh, although it is great, I do like selling on websites, you have to bring those customers to the site. You have to market to them. You have to run Facebook ads. 
But with Amazon selling, they're typically already on the platform and they're searching for it. And so that can end up saving you money uh, in your total costs when people are just finding your product through Amazon's platform organically. Uh, same goes for things like eBay and, and, and Depop and, and other platforms. Uh, you should have to do less marketing, which is why I like those platforms. Okay, so let's understand uh, what FBA actually stands for and then also a, a, a difference, which is uh, FBM. So there's two different ways you can sell on Amazon's platform. The most popular today is known as Amazon FBA, which is fulfillment by Amazon. Uh, and so what this is, is you actually, as a seller, you actually go, are going to ship all of your products to one of Amazon's warehouses. And then Amazon will ship that product to consumers uh, when they are purchasing it. And it, it, it kind of streamlines the process. This is why Amazon Prime works so well today. This is why Jeff Bezos was a real genius when he was innovating and pushing Amazon to become number one in e-commerce. Um, but Amazon, they have massive warehouses. They're able to ship out these products. So you as a seller, you ship in bulk your products to the Amazon warehouse and then Amazon, they do all the distribution for you. They're the ones who pack it up and they mail it out to everyone and they send it out. And so in a lot of ways, fulfillment by Amazon, it definitely uh, takes away a lot of stress of having to like go to the post office every day and ship all of your products. Um, but it does have some downsides. We'll, we will talk about that. But generally speaking, most people do gravitate towards Amazon FBA. Um, it's best for high volume, high margin products when you uh, are able to get products for a very low cost and you're able to afford the fulfillment fees that Amazon charges. I will share some of those fees uh, later on in this video so you can better understand if you want to do Amazon FBA or FBM. And so FBM is fulfillment by merchant and the merchant would be you as the Amazon seller. Um, and so the difference between this is that you're kind of like, think about like if you're selling on eBay, uh, you are shipping those products out yourself. And you can still do this on Amazon, um, uh, shipping out products by yourself. There are some great benefits to this. Like for example, uh, your shipping costs could be lower. Um, you also don't have to pay for like storage fees, for example. Um, but the downside is that, you know, uh, it's, it's really only gonna be good for people who are doing small scale selling, like you're selling a few products. Um, so it, it has its pros and cons, but most big Amazon sellers are doing Amazon FBA. Um, but you know, there's, there's no harm in doing FBM, uh, especially when you're first getting off the ground and you wanna just sell a few products on Amazon, test out the platform, then I, I do think that uh, fulfillment by merchant can be useful. Um, it also does depend on the type of product that you're selling. Like if you're selling uh, massive uh, pieces of uh, like machinery and equipment, then you might just want to like do that fulfillment by yourself because the shipping might be a little bit strange uh, versus if you're selling like small items, it tends to be more so on Amazon FBA. So that's the difference between the two. I just wanted you to be very aware of them. So now let's talk about how to find products to sell on the platform. And there's really two main ways that I find products to sell on Amazon. So the first strategy for this is kind of a little bit rudimentary, but it's, it's one of my favorite ways of doing this. And this is how we found our best products with the highest profit margins is by just doing basically manual search. So what I want you to get into the habit of doing, regardless of when you start your Amazon store, is start to just run basic numbers on everything that you buy or every item that you see. So for example, uh, I just bought some dumbbells the other day uh, for working out and, and they were like uh, uh, five pound weights because I want to do some, you know, whatever these exercises are where you do like the lateral raises. But uh, I bought those on Amazon and I thought, you know what, let me just run the numbers here and let's see how much profit could I potentially make? How much could I source these for? So every time you buy something, regardless of what it is, like um, I also, just bought this, right? And this is like a laptop holder, kind of just so I don't break my neck and it, it like props up my laptop. So I bought this the other day. And so what did I do? I went, I Googled, I found out how much could I get this made for, right? And I start to run the numbers. I'll show you how to calculate profitability later on in this video. But manual search can be a pretty great way to find products to sell on Amazon just by looking around at everything that you have and um, running the numbers on it. And how much does it cost? How much can you source it for? How much would shipping be? How much would Amazon fees be? You run all the numbers, you plug them into a calculator and you come out with potential profit margins on that product. Now, the manual search, although I do like it, honestly, um, 
it's not necessarily the best because it can be pretty time intensive and you can feel kind of limited to the products that you think about yourself. So the other way to find products to sell is to use some type of software like Jungle Scout. So Jungle Scout is, I think, a really crucial piece of software for Amazon sellers. There are some other options out there, but I think regardless, you, you are going to want some third-party software for selling on Amazon because this is what I use to find products um, and look for keywords and really optimize my products. It, and it ends up really saving a lot of money and making you more money uh, if you are able to use all of their features. So I will leave a link to it down below in the uh, description of this video. Um, but let's say that we want to find some products. So what we can do is we can go to product research and we can click on Opportunity Finder. This is one of my favorite tabs on the platform. So what you can do is you can look through all of the different categories and then also you can uh, look at uh, monthly units sold, monthly prices, monthly search volume. So what this software does is it's pulling all the data from Amazon. Now it, it's not necessarily exact, it kind of like extrapolates data, I believe, because they don't like have exactly seller's information. Um, but what they're doing is they, they kind of crawl on Amazon's website and they try to extrapolate data and estimate how much people are selling and uh, like how much volume certain products are selling. So uh, what I do is I go through on this software and I look at all the different categories. Now you can pick between these if there's a specific category that maybe you understand better or you feel like you can source products better for. Uh, I, I tend to actually really like things like pet supplies um, or home and kitchen um, or things like sports and outdoors. But let's just say for this, we will do all categories. And then for uh, the parameters here for when we're trying to find potential products to sell, uh, this, this is going to get kind of interesting here. So average monthly units sold. I wanna find products that sell at least 100 units per month, right? Because uh, if, if there's a category that's only selling like one or two products per month, I don't really wanna be in that business. It doesn't really sound like it's going to be very uh, useful for me. But then also if we're looking at things that are selling like a million units per month, that might be too difficult for us because you know we don't have a million dollars to start off with uh, to, to get our products. So let's say that average monthly units sold, we wanna have at a minimum of $100. And then for something like average monthly price, um, I tend to not sell anything on Amazon that is going to be uh, less than $10. That's kind of a good rule of thumb because if you're trying to sell like a Rubik's Cube for uh, $4, it's going to be very, very difficult to make any money on that. You probably won't. So anytime that you see people selling for something less than $10, they might be making like 25 cents profit, if that, on the product. Um, so it's, it's super difficult, right? I don't like to find those really, really slow cost products. Um, it's just very, very hard to actually make a profit on them because there's shipping fees, there's Amazon fees, there's storage fees, um, and those fees really do add up. So I, I wanna say that I want uh, a product with a minimum price, I'm gonna say $12. Sometimes I do 10, sometimes I'll do 15. Uh, typically, the higher the price, the better in terms of products that you are selling on Amazon because it just gives you more room for potentially higher profit margins. Um, but sometimes I do plug in a maximum price as well because you know maybe you don't have the budget to sell like $500 uh, dishwashers on Amazon because that's you know you might only have $500 to your name and it's it's hard to you know sell massively expensive products. Um, so. $12 as a minimum price, um, and then monthly search volume, you know, I wanna see things that are at, at least getting searched for 500 times per month at a minimum. Sometimes I'll set this a lot higher as well. Um, and then also we can look at things like search trends, right? If it's like doing well or it's not doing well, um, and then also seasonality and competition. We don't want anything that's high competition, okay? Because for example, like if we try to sell exercise bands or even dumbbells, for example, um, there's so much competition on that. There are thousands of other people who can probably undercut us. They maybe are manufacturers or have really great relationships with manufacturers. So. I wanna find things that have very low to medium competition. Uh, realistically, I mean, it'd be great to have very low to low competition, but we can go up to medium just in case there's a product that we could kind of uh, make a twist on and potentially improve. And then also seasonality, right? Uh, maybe like Christmas ornaments, for example, are going to be super seasonal uh, and people are only buying them in the fall and in the winter and then in the summer, spring, nobody's buying Christmas ornaments. Um, so some people like to play that game. I, I actually do like that as well. Um, I, I do like to play the holidays, but um, 
for this, we will just leave it uh, kind of wide range here. And then you can even include keywords for uh, like to get really specific if you want to. Um, and then we can just click on search. And what this is going to do, you'll see what this does here. Uh, it's, it's going to crawl everything on Amazon and it's going to show us product recommendations. And it's going to show us information. Uh, like I said earlier, this is a lot of this is extrapolated data, um, but it is very, very helpful, right? So let's look through here and we see like Squishmallows, which is like a little stuffed animal. People love them right now. Um, so those are selling really, really well. Things like oat milk, right? Uh, sugar snap peas. Uh, some of these products, like I'm, I'm not going to even consider selling, like I'm not gonna sell snap peas. Um, but a lot of these are also Valentine's Day because right now we're in February, February just passed. Um, and so um, you'll see a lot of those on there, but Squishmallows are really, really popular and they have pretty low volume, right? Um, so what I want you to do is go through something like this if you have Jungle Scout. If you don't, you can still do this manually on Amazon, you can search, that's totally fine. Don't feel like you need to have this software to be successful on Amazon, but I will say it is super helpful um, and I, I will leave a link to it down below and I think they should have like a trial period on there. Just read the details on their site, you can find out about it. Um, but go through here and, and try to find things that could potentially be interesting. Okay, so here's something that I, I, I think is a little bit interesting that kind of caught my attention is the Dash Rapid Egg Cooker. And we can look at this information and see that average uh, per month, they're selling about 2,500 units per month for this Dash Rapid Egg Cooker at an average price of $37.63. Yes, the 30-day 30, 30 search trend is a little bit down, but 90 days, this is up. It's very low competition. Um, and the seasonality is kind of medium, like mostly it's, it's best in January. All right, so we've done our initial search on Jungle Scouts platform. Now we're actually over on Amazon and we're gonna go a little bit deeper into this and see uh, if this is actually a viable product that we could consider selling um, and if we're able to source that product. So I went over to Amazon, just typed in rapid egg cooker and we're looking at all the various different products. Now the cool thing about Jungle Scout is that um, it actually has a Chrome extension. So what we can do is we can look at uh, all of the uh, estimated monthly revenues from each product as we browse through Amazon, the average monthly sales, Sales, daily sales. So uh, they're estimating that uh, this Dash company is selling about 24,000 uh, units per month, which is a pretty crazy number, which is $489,000 per month, which comes out to uh, about five something million dollars per year in revenue from this one product and they're selling it for $19.99. It has great reviews. So this looks very, very uh, attractive if we could potentially tra uh, 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 tap into this market. Now they do have some competition. A lot of it is uh, all of their own branded uh, Dash Rapid Egg Cookers, right? But if we go down further, we might be able to find some other brands, right? So here is uh, Elite Gourmet Rapid Egg Cooker. Um, they're selling this for $13.99 per unit, so uh, this does show that there definitely is some competition here, whatever this elite company is trying to break in and they're doing pretty well, doing about $46,000 uh, per month in revenue. So, uh, and they even break down like the potential net profits per sale, the total fees per sale, and really try to give you kind of a good understanding of if this is something that you could potentially make money on. Um, so it, it does look like this is something that is worthwhile looking into. Um, maybe not for an initial product because it could be pretty high competition as I'm sure other people are trying to tap into the industry. Um, but even on something like this, the Evo Loop Rapid Egg Cooker, uh, selling about 1,200 units per month, which is $25,000 per month in revenue. Um, so let's say that we're gonna go with this product. I probably would do a bit more research um, if I was doing this like actually like realistically and, and not just making a video here for you today, um, but go in deeper, right? And, and, and find out more information on like, why are people buying egg cookers, this style of egg cooker? Uh, do people have complaints about it? Go through, read all of the reviews on, on these different companies, like go through this product and then read all of the reviews, specifically the bad reviews, and find out what do people not like about this product? What's wrong with it? Does it break? Um, it burns eggs, maybe potentially, right? Um, find out all the bad things about it. Look, it's rated really well, so people do like it, um, but this could potentially help you create a better product that you can even potentially sell for a bit of a premium. 
So I want to reiterate that this is just an example product here. Um, but what, what I think is really most important with finding products to sell on Amazon is that you do niche down quite a bit, right? You're not selling generic products. You're finding something that you can niche down that there's less competition on. Um, and then also trying to start with just one product and then expanding out from that. If you start out with your Amazon store and you try to sell 20 products on day one, like 20 different types of products, it's going to be a big mess. You're gonna be all over the place. It's gonna be very capital intensive. You're gonna be throwing a lot of money into it. So I recommend start with one product. And then once that product is cash flowing, it's making you money, then you can branch out to other products. Okay, that's a really important thing to understand here. Um, but generally speaking, with finding products, the riches tend to be in the niches. Um, and, and so, Go with those things that are less common, that don't have a lot of competition, um, and that's going to be your best bet, okay? So once we've gone through and we've found our product that we're going to sell, uh, now we need to source this product. And sourcing products is, is something that can feel pretty intimidating for most people, especially if you've never sourced products before. Um, a lot of this tends to be coming from uh, different parts of Asia or uh, uh, Central America or areas that are going to have lower production costs. Like uh, if you try to make a rapid egg cooker in the United States, it's going to be very difficult because it's going to be very expensive. Labor in the US is very expensive. So a lot of manufacturers and suppliers for things like this, we're going to have to look in different parts of the world. So uh, one company that maybe you've heard of in the past is Alibaba. This is a really big company. This is where a lot of people find their products. They source them from Alibaba. And what this does, uh, I'm just searching for rapid egg cookers here. And uh, what this does is it uh, connects us with manufacturers and also like trading companies um, that uh, are basically like we're going to the source instead of buying on Amazon, we're going to the source and we're finding the suppliers, the people who uh, can make these products in bulk that we can purchase um, and then uh, sell for hopefully a profit, right? So we're gonna go through here and just kind of run some quick and dirty numbers and say, you know, is this something that's viable, right? A lot of these rapid egg cookers are selling for anywhere between 14 and uh, $25 per item. So is this something that we can make money on, right? So we're gonna go through here and look for rapid egg cookers. This one is, uh, we can get them for about a little bit over $2 per piece for actually pretty low quantities too. Like we can get 100 to 1,000 pieces for $2.30. As you go up higher, you can get them for cheaper. Now, the thing about dealing with Alibaba and manufacturers directly is sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating um, because I've seen people make mistakes where they'll just not even try out products and they'll just buy a thousand of these items for $2,300 and they'll arrive and they'll be uh, the wrong type of item or uh, the product isn't at, like working properly um, or something is just not good about it. And so this is why what you have to do is go through something like Alibaba, also look through other suppliers like DHgate. Um, there's probably about a dozen different websites that you can look on. Don't just look on Alibaba. So I think the best way to do this is you're basically still in the product research phase, right? You think you might have something, but you, you need to understand that it still might not work out, okay? So what I'm going to do if I'm interested in selling rapid egg cookers is I'm going to try to get a sample from at least five different companies on this platform. So I'm going to reach out to this company and try to just get one sample, say, hey, can you send me one sample? Uh, you know, I might have to pay like $5 or something just for them to send it over. Sometimes a lot of manufacturers will send it for free because they want your business, um, but I'll send it to this one, maybe to this one, uh, to this company, right? And I'll go through and find about five Sometimes if I really want to be thorough, I'll get like 10 different samples from 10 different manufacturers um, and I'll have them all arrive. I'll test all of them out and I'll say, okay, which one's best at like different price points and I'll understand which one is going to be my best option for selling. And this is why like you can't list products on Amazon this week. If you're a new Amazon seller, it's going to take time because you need to test out these samples. It's going to take some time for them to get to you. Then after you test them out, then you could potentially place a large order with that company through Alibaba and then they arrive and then you ship them to Amazon. And so it, it, it's going to take some time, probably from the time that you discover a product or from the time that you watch this video until you start selling on Amazon, 
I'm going to say it's, it's probably gonna be about a month. Sometimes it could be even longer before you get everything set up. And that's totally okay. Just make sure that you have some patience with this. Okay, now let's run some numbers to see if this is actually viable for us. So we can see that we can get these, these uh, rapid egg cookers for probably honestly about $1.50 per item, especially for large, like ordering it, ordering them in much larger quantities. Um, but a lot of these are listed for about $2. You can, you can negotiate with all the manufacturers and it also depends on how you have them shipped over to the United States or, or wherever you're selling in. Um, but let's estimate some profitability. So I like to use a basic quick and dirty number here. Um, and this is basically just uh, known as the rule of thirds. So if you are looking at an item, about one third of that item could be product cost. So uh, let's say that we can sell this egg cooker for $15 per uh, item. Well, about one third of that is going towards product cost. So $5. Yes, we can get these for about $2. That's great. Uh, one third of that goes towards Amazon fees. Yep, that sounds about right. We'll talk about Amazon fees in just a minute here. Um, but we have fulfillment fees, we have uh, uh, storage fees, all kinds of different fees. It's probably gonna cost about $5. And then it leaves us $5 left over for profit per item that we're selling, okay? So that is my quick and dirty analysis on that. Um, but there are actually calculators that you can use to find out specifics on whether or not a product is going to be viable for you. Um, and actually Jungle Scout has some of those different calculators on their platform. You can also do this manually if you look at Amazon's fee schedule. Okay, so let's say that you have uh, tested all these different samples um, and now, you want to place an order with one of these companies on Alibaba. Let's just say that it's it's going to be this one here. They have some pretty good uh, prices overall, right? So the thing with Alibaba is that everything is really negotiable, right? You can talk to these manufacturers. It, it can be a little bit difficult sometimes just because there sometimes can be a language barrier um, or different ways of doing business. But I would not recommend just placing an order through this here, right? Because like if we type in a thousand, it says it's gonna cost us $2,898 because shipping is gonna be $800. Look, and this is through Ocean Express. So like, I can just tell you right now, this is this is uh, too much money for shipping. You can get the shipping cost for way cheaper than that. Um, and so generally speaking, like uh, you can look at shipping through uh, Ocean Freight or uh, through like air, okay? And the problem with Ocean Freight, like if you wanna order a thousand of these items, um, um, it's it's going to take a pretty long time because this ship is coming over from, it uh, looks like this supplier is actually indeed from China. And so it's probably gonna take like a few weeks for that to go into a shipping container, comes over on a massive freighter all the way across the ocean, probably goes through some canals, through Panama Canal or through the uh, Suez Canal. And it, it takes a long time, right? Um, and so if you have the time available and you're not in a rush to get this product to market instantly, then it's going to be lower cost per product, right? Uh, versus if you do this uh, through air, which you can probably change it right on here, uh, you can do this through express, which is going to be delivered much faster, but look at how much more this is going to cost you, which is going to be an arm and a leg, uh, almost like $4.70 per unit, uh, but then this is likely going to be shipped uh, by air. So. I would recommend just doing ocean, fr uh, ocean uh, uh, freight, ocean shipping, and you can negotiate with all of these companies. You can call them up. Uh, I'd probably recommend emailing just in case because there's a lot of time differences. I think Beijing is like 12 hours ahead of New York. So you can send them emails and communicate and see if you can get these costs lower. Now, also depending on the manufacturer, you also might be able to have them do something for you called private labeling where uh, they have an option um, and you can learn this through email or even through the product listing. Uh, sometimes they will mention that they do have those capabilities where they can actually like attach logos for you, whether it's a sticker or it's some type of decal on the actual product itself. Um, it might cost you a little bit more, but it's going to give you that brand recognition. Like going back to the, the Amazon searches here, right? We see certain companies like Bella and Dash have this kind of brand recognition. I'm sure people have bought these in the past and they know Dash is a really great rapid egg cooker company. So it is, I would say it is very important to have a brand name and you can get that decal on there uh, from the manufacturer doing that, that's great. But also you can attach those decals yourself if you need to, if the manufacturer doesn't allow you to do that. Um, I've, I've seen that done before in the past where people will just have literally just stickers that they'll have made. And then when the products arrive uh, through freight, through ocean freight, they'll just attach the stickers onto the actual product when it arrives in the United States or wherever you are selling it uh, um, before you actually send them off to to Amazon, you're going to inspect a lot of those things, right? So um, 
let's go ahead and let's say that we wanted to place an order with this company. Uh, we can contact the supplier, email them, talk to them over email, make sure that you understand which supplier this is and do some research on this. They actually do have reviews here and you can learn more about the company, where specifically they are located, uh, right? They have three point, or they have 4.3 stars out of five, 33 uh, reviews from people, right? Average response time, five hours. Um, and overall, they seem to be uh, pretty reputable of a company. They also speak Spanish, English, and French, and they've been doing this for almost 20 years. Um, but make sure that you you still do, like I've, I've seen people have these problems where they'll get a sample, it's really high quality, and then they actually place an order, they get the shipment of a thousand or 5,000 uh, uh, items, and they're maybe not as high quality. So uh, there there is something to be said about uh, having really trustworthy uh, manufacturers and people you can rely on in this space. And this is why like over the years, we've now created uh, great relationships with people directly in uh, Thailand or in China where we have this great relationship with them um, and we know that we can trust them very, very well. Um, you do kind of have to take some risk here because you don't know these people right off the bat. Um, but you know, once you build those relationships, you'll end up going on business trips to China. I've only been to China once, not for business. Um, but we probably will be going sometime next year just to look at some different factories and, and kind of really get into it deep there. Okay, so there are going to be a couple of details that I'm going to leave out in this video. Uh, I'll try to make a longer video if people really want to understand like the specifics on getting those products from China or from the manufacturer to your doorstep and actually getting them onto Amazon's platform. But for the sake of this video, because I don't want to you know, make you sit here for six hours, uh, we're going to continue on here and talk about the next step of the process here, which is understanding Amazon seller fees, setting up your Amazon seller account, um, and then also uh, analyzing how we can create the best product listing once you receive these products uh, from the manufacturer. All right, so if you go to sell.amazon.com, it's going to take you to uh, the sellers page here, where I want you to really explore and understand uh, what the different fees are going to be with Amazon. I'm going to be totally honest with you. There's a lot of fees involved with selling on Amazon um, and kind of for good reason. I mean, they do a lot of the heavy lifting for you, um, but they have things like referral fees and fulfillment fees. And then there's other costs associated with that as well. So let's first actually look at the selling plan because we have two different options here. So on one side, we have the individual selling plan, and then we have the professional selling plan. Now, if you want to take this seriously, the professional selling plan is going to be your best bet. If you're selling more than like uh, 20 or 30 items a month, then the professional plan is definitely going to be for you. Um, but if you're first getting started, you know, you could do the individual plan. Um, you are going to have some uh, limitations on things that you can sell, also the different tools available to you, but there's there's no uh, harm in, in starting off with the individual plan, especially if you're just trying to get off the ground and sell your first few products, that's totally fine. If you can afford it, I, I would totally just jump to the professional plan immediately. Um, and just looking at the different features that are available here, right? Uh, with the individual plan, yes, you're, you're able to list items uh, and you are able to do Amazon FBA with the individual plan, um, but you're not going to be able to uh, access certain categories categories. Um, you're not going to be able to create listings in bulk. You're not going to be able to manage your inventory on Amazon's platform and a lot of other features here. So professional, um, I would recommend doing. Okay. So let's talk about referral fees. Uh, this is also going to get you quite a bit here. Um, so this is basically what Amazon, you can almost view this as like marketing fees from Amazon or um, like how people are getting to your product. They're probably not just finding you on social media and then buying your product on Amazon. They're probably finding it, finding it on Amazon's platform already or maybe they're like Google searching and they find it uh, like on a Google search. But nonetheless, um, you're going to have referral fees for uh, Amazon that you have to pay to Amazon for every product that you sell. So uh, they, this does vary based on the uh, different industry that you are in. So like if you are selling baby products, you're paying um, a minimum of, of 30 cents per item, uh, but it's going to be 8% for products with a total sales price of $10 or less and 15% for anything more than $10. Um, so for us, right, we're looking at uh, probably uh, cookware, right, like kitchen supplies. And so we can go and find kitchen supplies and see how much is it going to cost us to, uh, sell with referral fees. And I'm looking for kitchen supplies. And here it is here. So uh, if we're selling this egg cooker, it, Amazon's going to take 15% as a referral fee for selling our product. 
So if we're selling our egg cooker for $15 and they're taking 15% of that, I think that's $2.25 if I did that math correctly in my head there uh, in a referral fee for our egg cooker that we're selling. Okay, so now we have to factor in all these different things, right? We're looking at the price of that egg cooker, which is going to be, let's say about uh, $2.50 per egg cooker. Then we have uh, uh, $2.25 for referral fees on Amazon. Then we have the Amazon storage fees, which we'll talk about here. And let's scroll down a little bit more. The fulfillment fees, right? So fulfillment by Amazon. Uh, we need to look at how big our product is. If it's going to be uh, about large standard and it's maybe say it's going to be somewhere in the eight to 12 ounce range, it's going to cost us $4.24 in fulfillment fees. So we add up all those. Okay, so $4.24 is going to be the shipping fee that Amazon charges us plus $2.50 for the product fee of uh, sourcing this egg cooker, plus $2.25 in the referral fee that we're paying to Amazon. Now we're at $8.99 already. You can see how this starts to add up quite a bit. Um, and then uh, there are going to be some other random fees as well. Like for example, we need to calculate in that $39.99 per month that we're paying to be an Amazon seller, to have that professional. So we can average that out based on you know how many products we're selling, like if we're, if we're selling five products per month, it's going to be a bigger cost than if we're selling a thousand products per month uh, when we're calculating this on a per product basis. But you can go through and really find uh, how much it's going to cost you. It, it is dependent on how big your product is. So it honestly, it might be a chance that we can even squeeze into something that's in like this uh, eight to 12 ounce range, but it falls into this um, uh, small and light category. And that might only be like a few dollars for us. Um, now we also have storage fees for Amazon. This is one of the last fees that you'll have. There are some other miscellaneous ones as well as you're going to learn as an Amazon seller. Um, but storage fees is basically uh, for having your product in Amazon's warehouse. It's not free, right? And this is why you wanna make sure that you're selling products fast enough and that you're also not ordering too many products up front. Like if you order 10,000 egg cookers and you send them all to Amazon's warehouse, well, you're going to be paying for Amazon's warehouse, uh, somewhere between uh, uh, 56 cents per cubic foot up to $2.40 per cubic foot, depending on the product size that you have, right? So if it's standard size, which would our egg cookers would fall into that category of standard size, um, it's going to depend. Like in the fall, wow, it really goes up quite a bit compared to uh, from January to September, it's 87 cents per cubic foot um, is going to be our uh, fee that's charged on a monthly basis. So we do want to make sure that we're constantly uh, moving these products and always selling them and that they're not just sitting in Amazon's warehouse for too long. And they also do have things like, for example, um, if they've been in uh, storage at Amazon centers for more than 271 days, um, then they're going to have additional inventory uh, charges on top of that. Okay, and then finally, and you're probably sick of hearing about these fees now, but here are the other fees associated with selling on Amazon. So we have those inventory fees. Um, we also have high volume listing fees, which is going to be very, very low. But if we're you know listing hundreds of thousands of, of items, uh, we can have that. And then refund administration fees as well. So there's quite a bit on that for fees, but we can see overall that even if we're being kind of uh, less conservative, we can probably have our total costs all in all for about $10 and we're selling this product for about $15. So it looks like there's a potential to make a few dollars profit per item that we're selling on Amazon with this egg cooker, with this rapid egg cooker, okay? So that's fees. Um, I do recommend going to sell.amazon.com and just looking these over and really going into the details to make sure that uh, whichever product that you're considering selling is going to be viable um, and, and hopefully, you know, is going to set you up better for success. Now, the other cool thing uh, is on Amazon, and this is owned by Amazon, they have things like learn and grow, which help you to actually create a better Amazon store. Look, Amazon wants you to succeed. They want you to use their warehouses. They want you to be able to become a successful seller. And this is why I said like, you don't need to spend money to learn how to sell on Amazon because they have tons of free resources here. Look at this right here, sell.amazon.com. Look at all these free resources for 
creating an Amazon store uh, and they, they have like different blog articles, they have different videos for guidelines on sourcing products and everything else. So it's really great. This is why like, don't, don't go out and buy a course, please don't buy a course. Um, you know, some of them can be good. Like I know a couple of people who are really great, reputable people who sell courses. Um, but I know equally as many people who sell just absolute BS courses when it comes to Amazon seller. And you can see that like, I, I kind of get uh, a bit annoyed by it because you know, like they take advantage of people um, who are trying to learn how to do this. So you can learn a lot of this on Amazon site or through free information. So there's three more things I wanna share with you in this video. One of them is uh, actually getting your company set up uh, so that you can start selling on Amazon. Then we're talking about how to list products. And then I'm going to share probably the most important thing, which is getting sales and actually getting people in the door and buying your product and how to optimize that and some different strategies. I love marketing, I love optimizing that. So it's probably my favorite section uh, and we'll save that for last. Now quickly, I wanna talk about setting up a company. So you can do this as like a sole proprietor just on your own without a business, but I really would recommend starting a business um, so you can file an LLC. If you're, if you're in the United States, look, um, I'm not uh, like a lawyer, so you should consult with someone like that if you really want to get serious about it. But personally, when I set up my businesses, I just set up an LLC in my state and you can do this through something like Inc. File. So I'll leave a link to them down below. We're an affiliate with them. Um, so uh, it's a great way to start a business if you need to file your LLC or you want to be like a C corp corporation. Um, you can look into all of that. We're not like, that's not really the primary purpose of this video, but if you are looking to create that business uh, entity and make it like very professional, then I will leave a link to them down below. Um, and they just help you through the process of setting up your LLC or setting up your C corporation or your S corporation. Um, and they do have some like FAQs on there, helping you decide like which business is going to be the best for you. So um, I will leave that link down below. Now let's actually talk more importantly, uh, back to the Amazon section of uh, looking at listings and how to create the best uh, listing out there, okay? So uh, let, let's go back to our rapid egg cookers and let's look at uh, say like the Dash rapid egg cooker. And I wanna just analyze this and share with you kind of like what I would do differently and what's really working. Um, so looking at this here, we can see that um, they have a lot of words in the title. This is really important. Anytime you're selling anything online, you need to keyword stuff the title as much as possible, all right? So if, if you try to list a product on Amazon and you just list it like um, rapid egg cooker, um, you know, for poached eggs or something and, and you know, black, like that, that's all you have as a title, it's going to be a lackluster title. You need to keyword stuff as much as possible into this title with as many descriptions of this product as possible because, you know, not everybody's searching for uh, rapid egg cooker. Some people are searching for things like um, egg cooker for hard boiled eggs. Some people are, are searching for things like omelet cooker or scrambled egg cooker um, or like different various colors for that egg cooker, okay? So stuff as many words as possible possible into the title. Um, of course, you know, you don't want it to be like running on too far. Like if you don't have any other words to describe the product, that's okay. But just make sure you're not using like three words as a description. And you'll look around at all other Amazon titles and you'll notice that everyone else is putting a lot of words in the title, okay? And this is a great way to like build great listings is to look around. Like at all the various products that you buy, just look at the top listing and what are they doing right? Analyze how they are creating their titles, how they are creating their descriptions. Um, and then kind of, I don't wanna say copy it, but definitely like use that as inspiration. You don't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to listing products. All right, and then looking at the description for the product, uh, this is exactly how I set it up as well. So using all caps for the first kind of like big tagline and then using bullet points for this. So it's very digestible. It's very easy for someone who's just scrolling on their computer or scrolling on their phone. They can see like the most important things, satisfaction guaranteed, six egg capacity, versatile, compact, and it includes all these different things, right? So I love this strategy that they use here, all caps for the big kind of tagline, and then follow it up with a couple sentences uh, to kind of give you the description of it, right? Six egg capacity, and then they talk about the specifics of it, you know, soft, medium, hard boiled firmness, uh, while saving time and water. And I, I think this is an overall just really great description that they use. Now, going on down here, um, you'll see things like frequently bought together. If you can launch products that are very similar and get these to kind of come up in the frequently bought together category, uh, this is also very, very attractive um, if you can kind of hack that. Um, but it's not always going to be like easy for people to do that. So um, 
the two other things that are really crucial for selling on Amazon is uh, the questions page, which if we scroll down past the description, yes, of course, fill this out, make sure that you use lots of pictures. And I love how they're using diagrams, super easy, digestible. You want this to be when someone clicks on it, they can just skim through very easy. They can understand it. They don't have to do like triple takes and try to like understand the font. Don't use any weird quirky fonts. Use uh, regular, normal fonts that are very legible. Um, but if we go down and we'll see the questions page, this is something that is really actually important. And I've seen people who don't answer the questions. Like if you're not answering these questions, you're going to be losing customers. Um, and I, I've even seen people who make their own questions and then have them on here just to help customers understand more about what this product is, right? So make sure that you're not neglecting these and make sure that you're answering these questions and you're kind of like moderating and uh, responding to people if they have problems. Uh, sometimes they will ask them in the question section and you can uh, kind of mitigate some of those potential risks there. And then of course, reviews are going to be absolutely crucial. This is going to make or break your ability to sell products. If you have bad reviews on Amazon, if you're getting uh, you know 3.5 out of five stars for your product and a lot of people are reviewing it very poorly, um, this is going to crush you. And Amazon will know that it's not a good product, they won't prioritize you, um, and people aren't going to buy it. And, and, and so you want to really try to get the best reviews possible. Now, you wanna be careful. You can't go out and like tell your customers to give you a good review. You can't like write a note and say, hey, can you please give us a good review? That is how you will get banned from selling on Amazon. So please don't go out and do that. Um, but honestly, the best way to get good reviews is to just make sure that your product is exceeding expectations. When someone sees a picture of it, they see the product listing, you're not kind of misleading them, right? Uh, if you say it's a six egg cooker and it shows up and it only fits four eggs, people are gonna give you terrible reviews, right? So you need to make sure that you are very honest with the description, you're very honest with the pictures, and then people will give you good reviews if the product is actually good, okay? So that's how you get good reviews. Um, just like I said, make sure you're not asking for good positive reviews because that is how you will get banned. Now, let's quickly talk about actually pictures uh, for your products. So what I would recommend doing is just hiring a photographer. Look, you probably know a photographer. I feel like there's a lot of photographers out there. I mean, there's not a lot of good ones, but there's definitely photographers out there. Um, so maybe it's like your cousin or someone in your family or someone at your work or someone's good with the camera. Have them set up uh, the camera and create some pictures for your product. Now, Amazon does prefer you to have a white background for your primary photo. So just keep that in mind as your like main listing photo, you want it to have a white background. You can have different backgrounds on, on other pictures, but your main one needs to be white. Um, but show people using it, right? Like they set this up in a kitchen, they show people cooking uh, tomatoes and other cool things. Wow, this is awesome. You can make breakfast in this. I didn't even know that. You can make your omelet, right? It doesn't have to just be for like soft boiled or hard boiled eggs. Uh, you can do all these different things. They show the different uh, types of eggs that you can make with it. And it's very, very helpful with all of these. They also show the accessories that are included with this. I love how they set this up. And what I would recommend doing, like if I was going to actually uh, like source this product and launch this product, um, I would, I would use this as inspiration. I wouldn't copy it. I, I would not rip it off because that's also how you get into legal trouble, but I would use this certainly as inspiration and not try to reinvent the wheel when I'm making a product description and taking pictures and also think about how can I potentially improve this. One of the best ways is looking at their reviews and seeing you know what issues people have had and if we can try to solve those issues that people have had with the negative reviews that have been left on there. Um, so now let's finally talk about getting sales for your product on Amazon. This is, this is my favorite topic. I love talking about how to get sales. So there's two main ways that you can get sales, especially initially on Amazon. So right now, people who are selling uh, these uh, egg cookers and they're at the top, Amazon already knows it's a good product, so they're just automatically listed at the top and it's kind of like pretty passive for them. Um, but the two ways for you to get sales, especially initially, is something known as PPC, which is pay-per-click. Uh, basically, you're running ads to get you sponsored, to get you to the top, like how this one is here, right? So this first result here is sponsored, uh, and the second result is also sponsored, and then you get down to the third result, now this one's not sponsored. So if you wanna show up at the top and you wanna get your first initial reviews, you wanna get your first initial sales, you can do uh, some ads, you can run ads for your product on Amazon's platform. You can do this through your seller dashboard. Um, and I honestly do think this is pretty useful. Like if you have the money to spend to kind of just 
get your product, like get your first initial 10 positive reviews, get your first uh, uh, 20 people, 30 people buying your product just so you can get things moving a little bit. I like to do this um, and then eventually, you know, kind of taper down on the ads or if it's profitable, just run ads continuously and always rank at the top like, like this company does. Um, the other option for getting your initial sales, getting your initial reviews and getting your first 50 to 100 sales is to use a strategy that I've, I've always done, and I've, I've been selling products online for over 10 years now, which is to severely undercut the competition, come in at a ridiculously low price to the point where people have to buy it. And they look at all the other options. They're saying, okay, why would I buy this for $14? Why would I buy this one for $20? When you might be selling yours for $10. And, you know, so this is what I've done for so long is I will run basically at break even, or sometimes I'll even run at a loss just to get lots of momentum and get hundreds or thousands of people to buy my product, get the thing moving. And then slowly, gradually, I'm able to raise the price, especially if it's a good product and you're getting good reviews. It's going to be a strategy that can work. It's risky because, you know, if, if you don't have like capital, you don't have a lot of money already, um, then it's, it might be a little bit more risky for you. But if you can afford it to have tight margins, then it's a great way to get your product boosted and get those first few hundred sales or a few thousand sales on a product. And then gradually, like I said, raise the price. Um, now, the downside risk to something like this of undercutting everyone else in the space and running at a loss is that um, sometimes <laughs> it'll have the reverse effect and you'll list your egg cooker at $10 and now all of a sudden all your competition says, uh-oh, they're sucking up all of the uh, 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 customers, they're taking all of our customers, now they go and they lower their price and it creates like this negative price war where basically you just keep lo like lowering your prices and it brings everything down and then everybody loses money. That's a pretty bad um, thing to see and you know that'd be pretty unfortunate. But um, so that, that has happened to me a couple times in the past where my competition will lower their prices as well when they see me undercutting them. All right, so those are the basics of selling on Amazon. I hope I was able to answer some questions for you and clear things up and kind of give you a basic path towards selling your first product on the platform. I know there's certain things that we did not get a chance to talk about in this video. So if you wanna see more details, if you have specific questions, please leave them down below in the comment section, or you can even try to DM me on Instagram. I try to be as active as possible on that platform. I do some Q and A's sometimes, so you can reach out to me there, um, follow me on the platform. I can't promise that I'm going to respond to you. So as long as you understand that, um, cause sometimes I just get very busy and I'll get hundreds of messages, but I do try my best. Um, so that is the video that's going to wrap it up. We do have lots of free resources on this channel to help you scale your business. Don't forget to check out Jungle Scout software uh, to get you started with selling on Amazon. And then also, if you want to file your LLC with Inkfile, I'll leave both of those links down below in the description of this video. Lots of free resources out there. I wish everyone the best of luck in selling on Amazon, some people are going to succeed, some people are going to fail, that's just how it's going to be, but I really hope that you can succeed with selling on this platform. So thanks for watching, and I'll see everybody in a future video.